Okay, before I start today's duck station and how to enable shader setup guide, if you like what you see today, hit notification, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content here on my channel, just Jamie. That means you get notified every time I release a new setup guide and it really helps out my channel too. So last night I uploaded a guide how to add shaders in the CRT effect using RetroBat front end. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do this with DuckStation standalone. So I'm going to open up DuckStation first and as we can see I've got two games here which are traditional 16-bit-esque games to some extent. So we're going to be using the Raven Project and Rayman. So first of all what we need to do is right click on the game go to properties and we're going to go to post processing now the first thing we need to do to enable crt shaders or whatever type of look you want to give your games is just go to enable post process and just make sure a tick is on there and if we go to the add tab just there just left click you'll find lots of different shaders so for this i'm going to use the crt new pixie effect reshade now what I'm going to do is just close this down and open up one of my games. I'm going to go for Raiden Project Load State. And as you can see, we've now got a CRT effect. Now we can do this on the fly per game. So to open up your shader settings, we're going to go up to settings whilst the game's running, down to game properties, post processing. And as you can see, we've still got that effect, which is happening right now as I'm doing this. So what we can actually do is add more effects to this. So what I'm going to do is go back to add. And from here, we can choose what we want really. So if I was to go at the CRT lots GLSL. And if I then left click on that lots, we're going to find scan line weight options, scan line scale. So if I drag this slide up and down, as you can see, as I'm doing this, it's giving the game more depth more darker colors so we can actually use as many shaders per game as we want and you can do some really interesting things here so again if i go to add this time i'm going to add collaborator glsl again if i left click on that one i can actually change the luminance of the game and as you can see as i drag the slide down the screen is becoming much brighter if i drag it right up to the top to free it's darker and we can actually fine tune and adjust the games how you want. So obviously back in the day on CRT TVs, a really high contrast would be that almost retro look looking back at it nowadays. So from my experience of playing games on CRT TVs back in the day, you want lots of high contrast for the collaborator, such as the orange sun color. So let's go back up the CRT new pixie. If we take a look at the options just here, we got use frame image. If I enable this one, as you can see, the game has now got a frame around it, which looks pretty cool. This time I'm gonna go to internal and we can add more shaders here. And again, just like display, make sure enable post process and it's checked just like I've done. If I go to add, I'm gonna add some of the same shaders within internal as well. So I'm gonna add CRT new pixie. If I left click there, I'm gonna go to use frame image. So as we can see, as I'm enabling that, the game inside of the frame is also getting a frame just to clear things up. Uh, we've also got other options here, for example, with new pixies such as interference. If I enable this one and disable it, you will see some variation of image changes per game. And if any point you get really lost and you don't like the look of what you've done, all you need to do is go to restore defaults and everything will reset itself. And to remove these, if I go to remove and disable post-processing just to make sure that one's off, and again, we don't actually have to remove these if you don't want to. It's just literally a case of going to enable post-processing and the game goes back to normal. But again, we can choose to remove particular shaders if you want to, or we can go drag to the bottom and restore defaults. So if I go up to enable post-processing again and restore defaults, it's now gone back to the default settings. So there's many different options here. And just remember, you've got two ways of doing this. We can disable in a post process and under display. If we go to internal and enable this one, add CRT, and there we go. So we've got two ways of doing this internally as well as the main display itself. So really there's too much to go through just here, but I think some of you out there will find this pretty interesting to play around with. And like I said, we can do this per game 
and on the fly as well. So rather than go into it blind without seeing what you're actually doing, you can actually do it as you're playing the game, as it were. And in terms of saving your settings, Duck Station will automatically save everything for you. So if I close out of this game, and if I open it back up, Raiden Project, Load State, and there we go, it's now loaded back my saves. And that's it for today's Duck Station and how to add shaders guide. So a lot of people have been asking me recently about CRT shaders. And like I said last night, I covered this through Retrobat. And tonight I thought let's show people that Duck Station standalone can actually do this as well. So it's really just a case of just adjusting the shaders you're adding to get that fine picture. Like I say, if you recall and you're old enough to remember playing, say, PlayStation on your old TV back in the day, you'll remember that contrasts were really high. So always take a look at hiring your contrasts just to make it a little bit more blurry. Anyways, that's it for the guide today. If you like what you see today, hit notifications, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content. Also check me out on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and TikTok. But until next time, stay retro. Thank you.